Hey everyone, you're watching a physio named Jonah. Now that's this guy. Who is now a this guy that's been practicing physiotherapy for over one full year? I'm a veteran. In today's video, I'm gonna be reflecting on my own first year of practice, incorporating some perspectives from friends or colleagues to give you an idea of what it's like to be a physiotherapist in your first year of practice when that first year is in a pandemic and you moved to Sudbury in that first year and you had two cats and a dog. Is this gonna be relatable to absolutely anybody? Starting out as a physiotherapist is hard. It's hard because you have all of this educational knowledge from school, some good experiences from placement, a lot of excitement to get going, and then boom, there you are, sitting in front of a patient who's looking at you, guess you, to fix this very real pain problem that they have. Speaking for myself, I found this to be incredibly overwhelming because I take that responsibility very seriously. Someone is bringing their pain, someone's bringing their problems to you and asking you to fix it for them. And when you're starting off, you don't feel like you have all of the tools when the people who come into your practice don't look like the textbook questions that you got in school. People are a lot more complicated than textbook questions and I honestly left a lot of my first few patient interactions kind of feeling like, yeah, kind of like that. Of course, over the first year, I have started to feel a lot less stressed than when I started off, thank goodness. So if you're a young physio or healthcare practitioner, it does get easier as you go along. You'll get more comfortable seeing people as they come in. I do think that it's hard to tell if that's from being just so much better experienced, or if you know you just get a little more used to not knowing exactly what to do and not knowing the exact way to respond, and just getting more comfortable in that insecurity. I started practice as a physiotherapist in Toronto, Ontario. Yes, that is in fact in Canada, the country most aptly represented by the snow world and Super Mario Brothers. During the COVID-19 pandemic, my girlfriend and I decided to move north to my hometown of Sudbury, Ontario. It's a smaller town further north in that snow world, so just picture it kind of like this. This meant that I was going to have to be changing clinics. I have now learned that moving clinics and restarting your clinical practice in a new location is kind of like starting over from scratch again. The whole schedule is assessments, you don't really know anybody, you keep getting lost on your way to the bathroom, I mean the last one could just be me. So now having gone through a move myself and having seen multiple of my colleagues or friends do the same thing, I think what I've learned is try and give clinics or different workplaces as a healthcare professional a chance at the start. <laughs> I mean this sounds like really obvious advice, but you would actually be really surprised, especially in Toronto when I was there, how many young physios or healthcare workers jump around between different locations a lot. And that can be good, you obviously want to move if things aren't working out the way you were hoping for them to, but it's worth it to give things a try, see if you can get comfortable, and not just become another young nomad physio who has no really continuity with patients because they're jumping around all the time. Yeah, I mean, I guess you might as well just talk about it. My first year of practice was interrupted by the COVID-19 pandemic. It's been a pretty weird first year. So the pandemic shut down the clinic that I was working at about five or six months into my start of practice. Uh, I was really just trying to hit my stride right before that. I was having more successes with people, getting more comfortable in the day to day. I had just gotten my confirmation that I passed my national exam so I could keep being a physiotherapist. And then we started hearing all about this virus from overseas and you all know what happened. This meant that I wasn't able to do any in-person appointments from March 14th until June 1st, in the first week of June or so. So what did I do during the COVID-19 pandemic? Should probably have one of those. I got by. In the physiotherapy world and the clinic I was at, we tried to stay in contact with people virtually, um, phone calls, email, however we could keep some kind of continuity, but it, it really wasn't easy, obviously. One of my favorite parts about physio is being one-on-one -on -one with somebody, being able to physically look at problems, try and make movement patterns better, and that's it's hard to do through a computer screen. You can do a lot of education, you can do a lot of other great things, but you are lacking a key component of physio that I like anyway. 
Physiotherapists have had to deal with COVID in a lot of different ways. Friends of mine who work in ICU had a much different experience from myself. So I think the one big takeaway that we can all take across many different avenues is just try and be adaptable. Um, connecting to people in different ways and adjusting to different forms of practice when you get back is pretty crucial and I'm kind of glad I learned that lesson now as a young physiotherapist. And I mean, obviously I started this whole YouTube channel this past year. I uploaded my first video in March of 2020 and I have been planning that since about November of 2019, so pretty early on into practice I knew I wanted to start trying to do this whole video transmission thing. Could I sound more like an 85 year old man than saying video transmission thing? Honestly, I had no idea how to make a video, upload a video, edit a video, do anything when I started off. And you could still argue based on the content quality that you're looking at that I'm a bit of a YouTube noob, but I am very much enjoying the process, figuring it out, and it has been, it's, it's been quite a ride. Making these videos keeps me learning, getting to read more about things that I am interested in in the physio world, practice how I explain them, and I think all of that is valuable. And if you're a young physio or healthcare practitioner out there, whether you're thinking of starting YouTube, lots of people do Instagram, all sorts of different things, I think it is valuable because it keeps your brain thinking about and getting excited about things within the career you've chosen. For me personally, I need the practice because when I was a student, I once told someone that their spine was like a series of rocks with balloons in between them when I was trying to describe discs. Practice makes perfect people. In summary, looking back at this first year, it's been fairly turbulent because of some things outside of my control and multiple things firmly within it. But all in all, I can say that I love the profession that I have chosen to make myself a part of, and I am excited to continue to keep learning more about it as I move forward. Stay tuned to this channel with that subscribe button, hit the bell so you get the notifications for when I release a new video. Drop a question in the comments for me if you want to hear from a physiotherapist. I use that as getting ideas for new videos and things like that, so if you've requested one, it is likely upcoming, so stay tuned there. Otherwise guys, move your body, have a laugh today, and I will see you at the next video.